The Wrecker and the Death Ship From Traditions and Hearthside Stories of West Cornwall by William Battrell This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org Recording by Son of the Exiles The Wrecker and the Death Ship by William Battrell Persons of a notoriously wicked character were said to have been frequently taken off bodily by old Nick when they died. The following is one of many stories to that effect. More than a hundred years ago, a dark strange man appeared in St. Just. No one knew whence he came, but it was supposed, however, that he was put ashore from a pirate ship by way of marooning him, as the crews of such are wont to do, by any wretch that is too bad even to consort with high sea robbers. He didn't appear to want for money, as he soon rented a small, lone tenement near the shore, and married a widow of the neighbourhood. People wondered for a long while how so many vessels got wrecked under the cliff that bordered the stranger's farm. At length it was discovered that on dark winter nights, when honest folk were abed, he made it his practice to fasten a lantern to the neck of a horse, which he had hobbled, by tying down its head to a foreleg. Then he drove the horse along near the cliff, and the lantern, from its motion, would be taken for a vessel's stern light. Consequently those on board ships sailing by, expecting to find plenty of sea-room, would come right in and be wrecked on the rocks. Any of their crews that escaped a watery grave the wretch would knock on the head with his axe, or cut off their hand when they tried to grasp the rocks. He lived long and became rich by his sin. At length, however, the time came for the fiend to claim his own. When he was dying, his awful shrieks were heard far away, as he cried, Do save me from the devil, and the sailors there looking to tear me to pieces. Several parsons and other pious folks were sent for. All those of the neighbourhood readily came, for the dying sinner was rich. Though it was in harvest time and high day, the old wrecker's chamber became, at times, as dark as night. The parsons saw the devil in the room, when others could not. By their reading they drove him to take many shapes, but for all that he would not be put out. At last, when he took the form of a fly, and buzzed about the dying wretch, they saw it was in vain for them to try any longer. During the time the exorcists were engaged, the chamber seemed, by the sound, to be filled with the sea splashing around the bed. Waves were heard as if surging and breaking against the house, though it was a good bit inland. While this was taking place at the dying wrecker's bedside, two men, who were about harvest work in one of his fields near the cliff, heard a hollow voice, as if coming from the sea, which said, The hour is come, but the man is not come. Looking in the direction whence the words came, they saw no person, but far out to sea they beheld a black, heavy, square-rigged ship, with all sail set, coming fast in against wind and tide, and not a hand to be seen aboard her. She came so close under cliff that only her topmast could be seen, when black clouds that seemed to rise out of the deep gathered round her and extended thence straight to the dying man's dwelling. The harvest men, terrified at the sight of this ship of doom so near them, ran up to the town place just as the old sinner died, when his dwelling shook as if about to fall. Everybody in great fright rushed out and saw the black clouds roll off towards the death ship, which at once sailed away, amidst a blaze of lightning, far over sea, and disappeared. The weather immediately cleared, and nothing unusual occurred, until a few men assembled to put the wrecker's ghastly remains quickly off the face of the earth. Then, as the coffin was borne towards the churchyard, a large black pig came. No one knew from whence, and followed the bearers, who all declared the coffin was too light to contain any body. The sky too became suddenly overcast, and a tempest raged to that degree 
they could scarcely keep on their legs to reach the churchyard stile where such shoots of blinding lightning flashed around them that they dropped the coffin and rushed into the church the storm having abated they ventured out and found nothing of the coffin but its handles and a few nails for it had been set on fire and all consumed by the lightning end of the wrecker and the death ship recording by son of the exiles